Hi everyone, welcome back to this video. In this video, we're going to look at how to document our APIs with Swagger. So we've been most of the time using our mini documentation right here, and it has helped us to implement most of the routes that we need. In this video, we're going to look at how to use Swagger UI that is automatically generated for us uh, by first API. So if I head over to our browser right here, we can see that we have all the routes that we've been implementing for the videos we've been create, we've been uh, working through. So we have all the routes specific to orders as well as those who which are specific to auth. So in this video, we're going to look at how to document this in detail. So I'm going to head over to VS Code and head over to let's say order routers.py. So within our order routers, we're going to go ahead and document the various routes that are specific to making orders. So right now we have a uh, Right now we are having our route, so to document a route, we use doc string. So what I'll do is to come right in here and then say I'll write a doc string, and then within this doc string, I'll go ahead and document this particular route. So to document it, what I'll do is to write in form of Markdown. So if you don't know how to write Markdown, uh, this is how we write it. So for example, I may document this route as let's say. Uh, a sample hello world route and then I can give a simple description so let's say this returns hello world so if I save and head over to our browser when I refresh when you go to that specific route we can be able to see that our documentation has been displayed. So let's go ahead and also try to implement the rest of the route. So what I'll do is to go back to our VS code. So we're going to go ahead and uh, document each route. So what I'll do is to come. The first route I'm going to document is that one of creating an order. So I'm going to come right here and I write a doc string. Now within this doc string, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll place an, a heading to, and then what I'll do is to come and say, so this is going to be for placing an order. And after doing this, then I mean specify the various fields that we shall create. So I'll say this. This requires the following. And then what I'll say is we need, and in this case, I'll say that we need, uh, actually, let me go to schemas.py. So schemas.py is going to give us a good picture of the various field that we shall need. So in this case, we need a quantity and a pizza size. So what I'll do in here is to come and say that we need a quantity. It's going to be quantity. Sorry for that. And this is going to be an integer. So I'll specify here that this is going to be an integer. We can also say that in this case, we're going to also need uh, our pizza size. So in this case, I'm going to also say pizza size. And then this is also going to be a string. So if I save this, when we head over to our Swagger UI and I refresh, when I go to the route of placing an order, right here we have uh, these various fields. So in case you are to carry out documentation of every route, you're going to be writing this markdown, specifying which fields that are required uh, to be input in that specific route. This is helpful for people like front-end developers who may need to know which fields are required and what is the max length, what is the min length, and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and try to implement all of this. So what I'll do is to come, I'm going to simply copy all this. And I'll go in and paste it in a new route. So right here, we have a uh, listing all orders. So I'm going to come and paste this. And this is going to be a list. List all orders. So right here, what we'll do is to come. So we have something here. I'm going to fix this. Now after fixing that, uh, the next thing we're going to do is to 
check out what this route does so in this case we're going to see that we are required to access this route when we are staff members or super users so this is going to return all orders so what i'll do is to just come right here and what i'll do is to say uh, this list all orders made for so for super actually let's say this list all orders made it can be accessed by super users so in this case we can be able to document this route like this for example it can it lists all orders made and it's only accessed by super users so this then shows us front-end developer that in order to access this route you need to be logged in as a super user so let's go ahead and document another route so i'm going to go to one that is for uh getting an order by its id so i'll do the same thing i'll put a dot string right in here and in this case what we're going to do is to basically come right here and we first fix this so what i'll do is to say that this is for uh, getting an order by its id so i'll say get get an order by its id and after this i'm just going to come and simply describe what this route does so in this case what i'll do is come and say this get an order by its id so let's see uh so in this case we uh we see that the current user has to be also a staff member so i can also go ahead and specify that so i can say and is only accessed by a super user so right after doing that, I'm going to, going to go ahead and document another route. So in this case, we have getting a user's orders. So this can be accessed by uh, both super users and current and uh, normal users or customers. So what I'll do is to come right in here. And what I'll do is to also do that. So I'll paste in, that in. And then we simply call this uh, get a uh, current users orders so in this case it's going to be for getting a current users orders so i'll go ahead and provide a description so i'll say this uh lists the orders made by the currently logged in users so right after doing this, I'm going to fix this and then we have done with uh, documenting that route. So I'll do the same thing for this getting a specific order. So what I'll do is to come and paste in this, uh, this doc string. And I'll also come and do the same thing. So what I'll do is to come right here and then this is going to be get a specific order by the currently logged in user so in this case we're going to say get a specific order by the currently logged in user so right after doing this then we're going to specify that this returns an order by id for the currently logged in user now after doing this i'm going to save and head over to another route so in this case the route is for updating an order so in this case i'm going to come and update an order so this is to be accessed by all users i'll put a dot string once again and fix this and this is going to be for updating an order so i'll call this updating and an order and then i'll go ahead and basically describe the various fields that we need so i'm going to say this updates an order and so i'll say and requires the following actually let's say requires the following fields 
so it requires a quantity uh, an integer and a pizza size which is a string in this case which is a choice just like we saw for the previous videos so let's see if there are any other fields that you can basically specify so i'll go to the order mode once again and we have uh, the quantity and the pizza size we also have a specific route for updating the status so in this case i'm not going to document it in this route so right now i'm going to save and when you go to another route i'll do the same thing so in this case we're updating an order status so what i'll do is to come and provide the dot string once again so in this case what i'll do is to come and basically remove this so this is going to be for updating an order status so what i'll do is to say update and orders status and i'm simply going to fix this and here what i'll do is to come and say this is going to be this is uh for updating actually what i'll say this is for updating updating an order status so what i'll do is say this is for updating an orders status and uh requires the following field so in this case what you shall say and requires so what i'll do is to call this the so in this case what i mean to say is and this requires so i'll specify it requires the order status And this order status is a string, so I'll say, so I'm going to close this. So, uh, which actually I'll just say in string format. So after doing that, then we have only one route for deleting an order. So I'll come and also do the same thing. I'll paste in a doc string, and then I'll say this is for deleting an order. So I'll just go ahead and delete an order so this uh deletes an order by id so i'm going to come again and describe this so i'll say this deletes an order by its id and i'm going to go ahead and fix this indentation so after fixing it now if we are to go uh, we are also going to go ahead and actually document our 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 routes for authentication so i'll go to auth routes and right here we have a specific route so we have one for creating a user one for logging in and refreshing our token so let's go ahead so i'll start by documenting this so what i'll do is to come paste this doc string right in here and the first thing i'm going to do is to so this is going to be for a sample hello hello world route so and then i'm going to do the same thing for the one for signing up so i'll come i put in the doc string right here and this is going to be for signing up a user so actually i'm going to say i uh, create a user and this will require the following so i'll go to schemas.py and what i'll do is to copy the example right here so i me to copy this example here and then go to auth routes so what i'll do is to say actually what i'm going to do is to come and specify this so i'm going to put this in uh, these back ticks and then paste this in so we're going to require the following we're going to have username so what i'll do is to actually come right in here so what i'll say uh, username which is going to be an integer so the email which will also be a string so the password which will also be a string and we also have this stuff which is going to be a boolean so in this case let's say uh, we have our stuff is stuff equal to a boolean we're also going to have our is active which is going to be a boolean so i'm going to remove these quotes also remove these quotes i'm also going to fix this 
So right now we have uh, documented this route for creating a user. So what I'll do is to also do the same thing for our login route. So the login route requires a username and a password. So that's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, what I'll do is to come, actually, I'm going to put this in doc strings. So, so I'm going to put this in doc strings and I'm going to fix this indentation. So right here, what I'll do is to actually uh, put in, so I'm going to come right here and what I'll do is to specify. So this is going to be a login, a user, and this is going to, actually this requires, uh, so what I'll do is to specify this. So I'm going to put this in tactics. Shall see how this will look in a moment. So one, what I'll do is to remove this. So I'm going to remove these quotes. So once I remove the quotes, I'm also going to go ahead and just simply specify the type. So this is going to be a string and you also need the password. So I'll remove the email. I also remove these extra fields. And so the password is going to also be a string in this case. So I move the comma and Right after doing this, uh, we are done documenting our our login. So I'll go ahead and also do the same thing for our refresh token. So the refresh route is going to require us to provide a refresh token. So I'm going to go ahead and document this. So what I'll do is to come right here. Actually, just create a doc string. So within this doc string, I'm going to just specify that. Uh, so this is going to be for uh, refreshing. Actually, I'll say create a fresh, a fresh token. So I'll say this creates a fresh token after actually I'll say this creates a fresh token and it requires an access token. Actually, this requires a refresh token for us to be able to generate a fresh token or a new token. So I'll say this requires a refresh token. So let's say uh, when I go back to our login, so this requires username and password. We can also say uh, and returns a token pair. So the token pair has our access and refresh. So when I accept this, we're going to go ahead and see our documentation now our Swagger UI. So I'm going to head over to our browser and when I refresh, we have the various routes now documented. For example, if we go to the sample hello world route, we have a simple description for that. If we went to the sign up route, we have a sample description as well. So if we go and check the other routes, we have uh, other sample descriptions made. So in this video, we've learned how to create a simple Swagger documentation or for fast API. Thank you for watching guys. And if you would like to document your APIs in detail, uh, feel free to uh, write your custom documentations in your Swagger UI. Thank you for watching, guys, and see you in the next video. Bye.